Hi everybody, hope well. Thanks for clicking on my channel. So firstly, get the administration out of the way. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you've got any negative comments to make, give it a thumbs down and make the comments in the description box somewhere down below. And if you like the video, etc., please feel free to uh, just hit that subscription button. That'd be very much appreciated. So what are you talking about today? We're talking about this, my glorious KTM 890R. I've had it for about five months now. I got it from the uh, local dealer here, brand new. I put a load of bits on it. There's loads of videos I've done already, so just click on uh, somewhere in the description box below or one of the cards up here. If I can uh, put a card up there, I'll do that. And that'll take you to all the other videos I've done. Um, but what we're talking about today is is, as I said, I've just done a thousand miles on this lovely machine, so I just thought I'd give you a quick insight into what I do think of this 890R after a thousand miles. Further ado, let's get kitted up and let's go out. So here we are then all kitted up out on the bike. I've had the bike for five months as I've just uh, mentioned and I've just done about 1,084 miles just checking on the mileometer there. The only problems I had with the bike is when I first picked it up from the dealer or before I picked it up actually, uh, the battery was knackered, uh, so they had to uh, get a battery from KTM. So that just delayed the handover of the bike to me uh, by uh, one or two days or something like that. But other than that, the bike's been absolutely brilliant, absolutely superb, and I love it. Other problems that some of the KTM 790s and maybe the early 890Rs have had, uh, this is a 2021 uh, build model. Uh, they've had uh, oil leaks on the top right hand side of the engine, uh, just a bit of weeping oil. Um, the water pumps have leaked and the front sprocket seal has leaked as well. Um, and dare I say, uh, currently I've had no issues uh, in relation to those uh, known faults at all. Uh, red van man just trying to avoid hitting that so yeah the bike's been absolutely faultless in relation to that um, I live on a glorious island it's 40 mile an hour speed limit so I actually don't get to thrash the bike because uh, I'm going to get reported um, by the boys in blue so I uh, give it a little bit of stick as and when I can um, but it's not a, a, a bike that's totally thrashed and abused because uh, basically I can't do it so you guys in the UK or Europe Obviously you can uh, do your thousand miles at a lot higher speeds and maybe putting uh, more wear uh, on the components than I've done on my little uh, island measuring eight miles by five miles. So here's something you don't see uh, very often. Um, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Um, is it a BMW? I really don't know. It looks sort of BMW-ish. Tricycle thing. Let's go and overtake them and see what it is. Yeah, so, I, so as I've just said, I've had no issues uh, with the uh, known common faults that the engine gets, uh, no leaks whatsoever. So it's been a dry bike, which is brilliant. Uh, all the other videos I've uh, posted uh, previously, you can see all the bits I've put on it, but I think I've more or less thrown the KTM power parts uh, list at it. Um, it's got the heated grips, cruise control, which is very easy to operate. Uh, what else is there? I put the mirrors on. Um, the screen again I haven't taken the bike away so I can't really make any comments about the screen uh, but I think it looks all right I uh, put the micro indicators on down here they're lovely little indicators but they're a little bit pricey um, obviously the big the big one there is I've uh, swapped out the white plastics and put uh, gone stealth mode black plastics again there's a video on that uh, I quite like the way the bike looks and I've put the uh, the tank uh, protector pad on uh, as well uh, so uh, yeah, pretty uh, happy with how the bike looks and how the bike performs. Um, what else can I say about it? Uh, I don't want to waffle on too long. Um, yeah, in relation to the quick shifter, where I live, I've actually uh, deselected the quick shifter. Um, I just find that uh, below 5,000 revs, uh, which is where the bike tends to sit over here, the quick shifter is just a little bit too uh, clunky. Certainly go through first and second. So I don't bother with it, uh, so I've switched off. But uh, you guys, again, in the UK, you're always above five grand. So I guess it's going to be buttery smooth. But put, the, put something in the comment section down below if uh, that's the case. So yeah, I tend to leave the quick shifter off. 
Um, the DRL's daylight running lights, I've done a video on those as well. I can't stand the bloody things, they keep flick, flicking from, uh, basically you've got three, three, level, three lights, uh, you've got the top row, middle row and the bottom row, when you activate the DRL's, uh, the bottom row of lights come on, which is basically a low high beam. Um, and then when you go into a, a dark area, a little sensor up here, it senses that you're going in a dark area, your screen goes black and then it flicks on the, the low beam, which is the top row of lights. And my view is that if you're going towards a junction and it gets a little bit dark on the little sensor here, I'll put my finger over the sensor, you'll see it'll go dark. There you go, it's gone dark. Then that could be construed as somebody going to flash you and Bob's your uncle, somebody pulls out in front of you and away you go. And you can only deactivate the DRL system um, when you're stationary and then it'll cut it'll default to coming back on again or after you've turned the ignition off and then back on again which is ridiculous ktm sort that out you should be able to one have the screen in daylight or uh dark mode and you should be able to deactivate the drls it's uh, i don't like it at all uh, what else is there yeah as i said i've thrown the ktm parts uh been at it and i've got the bluetooth module which is rubbish i wouldn't waste your money on that i've got a very nice uh, garmin gps zumo xt that's brilliant um bizarrely uh, you cannot make phone calls with the module for whatever reason bmws you can make phone calls receive phone calls uh, but oh no ktm they'll only allow you to receive phone calls which is crazy uh, but you can play music as well on it which is fine but come on Come on BM, uh, BMW, come on KTM, sort it out. That Bluetooth model, you should be able to uh, receive and make phone calls. It's not a problem. It's all flipping hands-free. I don't know what the issue is. So that's uh, one of my major gripes there. That and the DRLs. So don't waste your money, folks, on the uh, Bluetooth model at the moment until they can sort out uh, some kind of um, software update, uh, which would be lovely. So if you're listening, KTM, please listen to your customers and sort that out. Uh, so things I've done to the bike then, uh, where I live, uh, the island roads are pretty naff actually. Uh, they get a lot of use and the uh, various services are always um, digging them up and resurfacing them. Let's see if this boat's going to overtake and then I'll overtake it. Uh, no, okay, I'll overtake him then. I don't know what that is, it's very, <laughs> it's very, I like it. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the roads are a little bit choppy and for that reason I've just done off the front suspension, rear suspension, compression, etc. Uh, just to make it more compliant so it doesn't knock my teeth out. Um, so yeah, at the moment the ride is very plush and it's on the softer side of the standard settings. So that's one thing I've done. Uh, the other thing I've only recently started do, to do uh, is the uh, throttle mode. I've I used to keep it in um, uh, race mode, I think it was, all the time. Uh, but I've just gone to street mode now. And what I find is that you get uh, far less, if sort of, I'm not going to say no jerkiness, uh, low down. Um, but you get, there we go, let's go down to second. There's nobody behind me. So, second gear then. It more or less doesn't quite do away with all the lurchiness. But it's it just makes it more compliant. You know, it's just easier to ride. And I think, and if I'm wrong, I'll put a little note up here somewhere. I think you still get full power as well. So uh, I'd recommend going to street mode if you're, you're doing a lot of slowish kind of riding uh, to save the jerkiness. So like, let's see what this does around the corner, second gear. Is that going to be compliant? There you go, 15 mile an hour. Yeah, it's fine. So anything else to cover then? And maybe the tyres, uh, the tyres of those Michelin Cup 3s, whatever you call them. A uh, really good tyre, obviously it's basically a track dime legalised for the road, but the only thing with me is, because uh, the temperatures, well I'm not going the distances to get the temperatures in the tyres, then they always feel a little bit sketchy, so maybe when I come to change them, uh, I'll go look on the forums, and see what the guys on the forums are going for. Maybe a, a tyre that's not as sticky, but a tyre that will warm up and give, just give me a little bit more uh, wet weather um, uh, ability, shall we say. Uh, talking of wet weather, this bike it doesn't go out in the wet, but I just got peed off with COVID 
lockdown and everything so I just wanted to get a fun bike uh, to complement my Africa twin so that's what I did I went to the KTM dealer down here a place called bikers and saw a lovely chap there called Owen and yeah we did the deal and together with the kitchen sink that we threw at the KTM yeah I got this great little bike and I absolutely love it absolutely love it I've had many bikes before in the past and I've got to say this uh, this is certainly quick enough with a hundred and I think it's 120 horsepower it's certainly quick enough let's go this way it's certainly quick enough to um, give you a massive smile um, if you want any more power good luck to you you're a far better rider than I am uh, this has got enough power for you certainly got enough power uh, can you take it away? I reckon you can. I don't know how comfortable it'll be. I've got the um, yeah, I've got the surprisingly. I've put the comfort seat on it as well. After about an hour and a bit though, uh, my bottom does start to get a little bit. Uh, you know, and you just got to move up and waggle the bum and that kind of thing. Uh, we have a little bit of that, um, but yeah, other than that, it's, uh, I think you could go away on here. I've put the uh, SW Motec tank ring on it again. There's all the kind of videos I've done. Um, and I've got an SW Motec City tank bag which uh, fits on here really nicely um, I was going to take it away the bike away last month um, last month I oh, know this month whenever it was to Wales uh, but I saw the forecast the forecast of two days of rain out of the five days so I decided you know what I don't want to get the little KTM wet uh, in case it dissolves <laughs> which is why I've treated treated it in ACF 50 um, so I opted to take my uh, Africa twin away again I've got two videos up there already thirds in the can I uh, just waiting to sort that out um, so I took that away but I'm desperate to take this away uh, even if it's a way to f just to France for uh, two days um, when I can because I think it'd be a, a great little bike to take away and have a bit of fun fun on it um, other dislikes really um, obviously when you get the bike uh, from the dealer it does come with standard standard which is in a box is your rear pillion seat together with the grab rails and footrest so if you haven't got them from your dealer make sure you get them um, so when I was going to take it away I put the rear pillion seat on and the grab rails and the only thing is the grab rails are fairly flush to the side of the bike and you're going to struggle to put straps through them um, so yeah maybe a KTM would just uh, give you maybe a, a five mil gap between the inside of the grab rails and the bodywork uh, that would be lovely something for them to think about maybe just to make it a little bit more practical uh, and then I was going to put a um, a Krieger 20 litre roll bag on the uh, seat oh it's busy down here very nice ice creams in that shop over there yeah um, sideline we've got Guernsey and you've got Sark in the distance there so the visibility today is absolutely amazing so I think I've pretty much covered everything uh, the engine is an absolute peach absolute peach I've got the uh, the slip-on um, exhaust on the back there I uh, haven't done anything else to the engine it hasn't been remapped um, it's just great as you can see now second gear uh, it's not lurching at all it's just brilliant it pulled very nicely in uh, that street throttle, throttle mode another very minor niggly problem is uh, if you don't keep the chain sufficiently lubricated then you get a bit of a whirring whining noise uh, and my whirring whining noise came from down here from the uh, left hand side um, yeah just keep keep on top of the uh, chain being lubed and you won't get any noises there so in a thousand miles what else have I sort of come up with um, dislikes wise I suppose yeah the side stand I just wish they'd put a, um, <coughs> a male sort of protruding part of it so when you come to a stop and you you you're you wanting to put the side stand side stand down then you don't have to sort of look down to see where the wretched thing is it's unusual bike no idea what that is a motor guzzy yeah you don't have to look down to see where the uh side stand is uh, most bikes have got that, that little protruding gun it so it's only a i don't know why ktm don't do that but hey ho um 
and the uh, the the tail section which replaces the rear pillion seat um, the way it's shaped it just becomes a mini reservoir when the bike gets wet um, so yeah a bit of a design area maybe it, you know it looks quite nice but um, when you're washing the bike when you get caught out in the rain um, yeah it just collects water a little bit but it's an ideal place for you to put your gloves um, and, your, and your glasses if you <laughs> if you're at their age like myself that you wear glasses and I'm being 55 I'm uh, well and truly at that age now where I have to wear glasses um, so that's maybe a little bit of a dislike uh, as well any other dislikes oh wow well, I'm struggling a little bit horn yes yeah, so a five pence horn I was gonna um, put a uh, Denali mini sound bomb on there but I tried but I couldn't get it on so uh, maybe I'll have another go at, at a, a later date uh, but I've got one of those on my uh, Honda Africa Twin actually and it's a really good horn um, any other I'm struggling guys for for dislikes of the bike I actually don't take this bike out in the rain it's uh, it's a I don't use it as a daily commuter um, this bike is purely a fun bike <laughs> and man you can have some fun with it absolutely love it really do love it yeah the tyres uh, because where I live they take a while to warm up so you've got to be a little bit careful but I've never had any problems with it uh, yeah a bit of an annoying thing here you've got a this thing opens the wrong way um, I wish well, I don't know why KTM do that so um, yeah you've got to maybe adjust all the fittings of your tank bag to make it uh, fit properly in relation to the heat generated by the bike uh, <clears throat> yeah anything above 20 degrees centigrade outside air temperature let's go down here shall we 20 degrees outside air temperature gauge if you're sort of in town kind of riding yeah you're gonna get a little bit of heat from the engine uh, when the air temperature is above 20 degrees or thereabouts roughly uh, fuel wise yeah I'm doing about I've done 110 miles uh, at the moment and it says I've got 30 miles to run so 140 miles to the tank but again uh, island riding where I live uh, so you might get a, a bit more than that oh god sorry guys just got to give it a squirt yeah you might get um, significantly more mileage than that uh, but I'm up and down the gearbox all the time uh, and my tyres are nice and warm now um, it's it's a great bike I've had loads of bikes before sports bikes but guys sports bikes in my view are dead why do you want 200 horsepower uh, when you can have 120 horsepower have equally as much fun um, yeah I have no idea and I can't I can't ride those bikes I don't think many people can I was having their lunch so that's it guys and a final word for myself about the bike the things that I love about it love the engine it does sound like a massive focus attractor on startup but when it's nice and warm it's uh, pretty nice it's got a nice deep deep tone there we go look my uh, fuel warning lights come on so I can go back to my main screen press the uh, return button and then I've got a uh, hazard light hazard light warning triangle down here saying go and get some fuel so I love the engine love the brakes love the suspension but you've got to play with the suspension folks uh, to suit you uh, if you don't play with the suspension you're not going to get the best out of the bike um, it's as simple as that do a bit of trail braking and you can just get pulled out the out of the slow bends Oh man, it's just so much fun. You just want to have fun, guys. It really is. Yeehaw! Pop, pop, bang, bang, burble, burble. Yeah, guys, it's just a great little bike. I love it. Um, you'll see it, so I, I've gone black uh, on the plastics. Uh, I'm not an overly, overly a great fan of the white, the white look. So I've gone black. And then I was going to get some decals made up. But when I put the uh, tank protectors on, I just thought it broke the black up quite nice actually. So I'm just going to leave it as is until I get change my mind. But uh, I really like the look of it. 
Well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, I haven't waffled on too long. If you're in the market for a 890R, I've had no problems of mine. Uh, touch wood. Uh, the only thing you might be looking at is the Yamaha SP MT09. And I just watched yesterday. Knox have done a really good comparison of the two, and basically they can't uh, they can't split them apart. Um, you either like one or you like the other. Uh, they can't split them apart. Go and have a look at that video. I'll put a link in the description below. Brilliant video. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Ride safe as always, and see you all again soon.